In this lesson, we're going to work on multiplying fractions where some reducing is required. Um, so in the last video, uh, both examples, uh, we multiplied straight across, top times top, bottom times bottom, and both products that we got were already completely simplified. Here we're going to look at a couple situations where that's not the case. And um, there is an easy way and a hard way to do these problems. Um, so to fully understand the easier way and to appreciate why it's easier, I think it's important to do it uh, the more difficult way at least once. So, so over here on the left, I'm going to do this problem in what I would refer to as the hard way. Okay, So um, we have um, this idea that we can just multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. Okay, that's fine. So uh, let me just rewrite the problem real quick, first of all. And then over here, let me actually multiply the top. So 25 times 18. So that's going to give me, looks like 450. Okay, so I have 450 on top. And that's over. Let's go ahead and multiply 15 and 9. And it looks like that's going to be 135. So I've got 450 over 135. But of course, I think we can agree that these are not reduced, um, especially when I see the top number ending in 0 and the bottom number ending in 5. I know that I can uh, take a 5 out of each one. All right, so let's do that. Uh, let's take a 5 out. So we'll divide by 5, divide by 5. And I don't know, let's see, well, this is kind of nice. Um, we could do long division, but I do notice that 5 goes into 45 nine times. So that would mean 5 goes into 450 90 times. So the top number up here will be 90. And uh, I'll go ahead and do the long division for the other one. 135 divided by 5, 5 goes into 13 twice. And 5 goes into 35 seven times. So it looks like we've got a 27 on bottom. And let's see, um, well, 90. 9 goes into 90 10 times. 9 also goes into 27. So let's go ahead and uh, divide both the top and bottom by 9. So I've got on top, 90 divided by 9 is 10. 27 divided by 9 is 3. And now finally, the top and bottom have no common factor, so it looks like 10 thirds is my answer. Um, usually, improper fractions are going to be a fine way to answer these questions. In fact, some of the problems will say specifically not to write the answer as a mixed number, um, and that's just because the computer is expecting it as an improper. But you could also you know, if, it, if you're not told not to, you can always put it as a mixed number as well. So 10 thirds or 3 and a third. Okay, so that's what I refer to as the hard way. There's a much easier way to go about this, so let's talk about that. So let me rewrite the problem here. We have 18 fifteenths times 25 ninths. Now notice what happened. We had two separate fractions, and we multiplied the tops together, and we multiplied the bottoms together. And after they were multiplied together, I started dividing both the top and the bottom by the same thing. So my question here is, why couldn't we just do that at the very beginning? Could we do our dividing of the top and the bottom by the same thing before we ever multiply? And, in fact, we can do that. And so this is what I refer to as the easier way. And uh, it's called pre-reducing. The idea that we are going to reduce before we even perform the multiplication. So here's the idea. Uh, let's start with the fact that we divided by 5 on top and bottom here. Well, the reason I was able to divide 450 and 135 by 5 is because the numbers 15 and 25 had a 5 in them. 
So let's just divide each of those by 5 right at the beginning. So 15 divided by 5 is 3, and it's okay that I did that as long as I also divide something on top by 5, and I can divide 25 by 5 and get 5. So the same rule applies if you divide by something on bottom, you better do it on top also. If you divide by something on top, you better do it on bottom also. They've always got to match up. So there was our division by 5. Now, let's look here. We have 18 and 9. Okay, well, they both share a 9 in common. So 18 divided by 9 is 2. 9 divided by 9 is 1. And then we look here. There's nothing else common. 3 doesn't have anything in common with 2 or 5. So at this point, now that I've done all my pre-reducing, I take 2 times 5 on top is 10, 3 times 1 on bottom is 3, and there's the same answer I got down there with a lot less work. So again, this is pre-reducing. And so the only rule is you can divide anything on top you want by a number as long as you divide something on bottom by that same number. Alright, let's do one more example. We have 6 times 3 fourths. So 6 times 3 fourths, um, let's remember our trick. We've done this a little bit with addition and subtraction. If you see a whole number that you need to add, subtract, multiply, whatever, to a fraction, uh, go ahead and take that whole number and put it over 1. So this becomes 6 over 1 times 3 fourths. And instead of multiplying straight across, we're going to first check to see if anything on top can, uh, we call it cancel with anything on bottom, but really we're just looking to see, can I divide both the top and bottom of any of these, I'm sorry, the, um, can I divide one of the numbers on top and one of the numbers on bottom by the same thing? And of course 6, I can divide by 2 to give me 3. 4, uh, four I can divide by 2 to give me 2. And then 3 times 3 is 9, 1 times 2 is 2. There's my answer. And again, okay, we could always write it as a mixed number as long as the problem doesn't prohibit us from doing so.